life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. I came so you can have life more abundant, life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. Spirit of the Lord is flowing through me, proclaiming the good news to all in me. Most assuredly, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. And that's what Jesus said. And if Jesus is in your life, it should happen over you too. And Pastor Larry is about to tell us how through the message, angels on alert, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or Zoom, please send us your feedback on your media chat or email us at info at seedchurch.life. Have bread and juice or use whatever you have to join us during communion. And stay to wrap up with our Afterglow Fellowship. Steve, would you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Maria. Dear God, we just wanted to thank you today for gathering everybody here to worship you. Lord, we pray for people that are going to be tuning in, not just right now, but also in the future. May this message, message touch them in a way that they'll never know. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your anointing on Pastor Larry and Pastor Loretta's life. Lord, and we just thank you for Z Church. And Lord, we just give you all the glory, all the credit, and all the praise. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, how many people know there's nobody greater than Jesus? Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Good morning. Climbed up to the highest mountain Looked all around, couldn't find nobody I went down into the deepest valley Looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody You better know that's right, come on I went across the deep blue sea couldn't find no one to compare to your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Oh, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. There's nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Nobody can heal me like you can. Oh, most holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways. Mighty is your plan. You are He who carried out redemption's plan. Come on. You are He who carried out redemption's plan. Searched all over. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. And I still couldn't find nobody. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Oh, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, and I still couldn't find nobody. 
There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater, no. Nobody greater than you. Come on, y'all. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Now, everybody, we're going to raise our voices to the Lord. Come on, everybody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than you. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. It's my honor and privilege this morning to introduce our pastors, Brother Larry Huggins and his wife, um, Pastor Loretta Huggins. I've known them for approximately 25 years, and um, it, it has been an amazing 25 years. We have spent time with them in the mission field, and they are the kind of people that walk the walk of faith. And when they say something, they stand by their word and they preach and walk in the word. And it is my honor and privilege to turn the rest of the service over to Brother Larry and Sister Loretta Huggins. Hello, Amazing Z Team. We love you. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time zone you're in. You're at the right place at the right time right now. Amen. Praise God. And again, thank you, Z Team, for just your wonderful prayer time. And just praise God, you know, and then uh, I have to tell, I'm going to uh, embarrass Maria, but I tell you, she just she had, was on. she was on today. I mean, just a smile in her voice, hallelujah, anointed. and then anointed. And then, of course, I've got to call uh, Steve, you know, I have to tell you something. I was thinking about Steve today. And I remember this time last year, he had encouraged everyone to uh, keep a journal of gratitude. So I did do that. And you know what I'm thinking about now is writing a story about my year 2022. Oh, you should. Yes. Well, you've, you've written uh, a lot of blogs. So you want to say something about your blogs, encourage people to go read them? Well, I'm going to leave that to uh, Pastor. Sh okay. Got to be obedient, right? Okay. Praise the Lord. Shonda. <laughs> well, no, just uh, you have some new blogs up. They can go to zchurch.life and, and read them. Amen. Exactly what he said. So there, <laughs> I, I wasn't ready to talk about it, but we are getting new content for our blog and different ones are writing. I am writing about the book of Proverbs and I'm taking a different approach to it. I had Pastor read some of it. And so I would love it that you would go online, read it. We're going to, for me, uh, Pastor Sharon is going to be posting it once a week, a new post for me, and I uh, have questions and things of the sort. See, you give me the mic, and then I don't know how to stop. That's Praise right. the Amen. Lord. <laughs> well, you know, we uh, have been praying for different ones, and um, our uh, song leader, uh, worship leader, Joseph, is out. He's taking care of his uh, lovely wife, his sons, and while he's trying to recover, well, not trying, but getting his health as well, and so we read, uh, we shout out to him and just say, we Praise miss God. you. We call oh, you blessed. blessed. 
And again, Pastor uh, Gail, thank you so very much. It's just been a wonderful time. We're blessed. We are blessed. And uh, we have a great we have a great Z team. I mean, you, you work so hard. You do so much for the Lord. And we want to shout out to all of our friends on Facebook and YouTube and wherever you're watching live, or even if you're watching a recorded version of this, we love you and we pray God's highest and best be yours. Amen. And we shout out to Elder Joy, who we never see, but I tell you, all of this, we she's behind. An, we do have an Elder Joy. We do have an Elder Joy. <laughs> yeah, she's, always, uh, she's always monitoring the chat, which, by the way, uh, we read your comments, and if you have a prayer request, you can put that in chat, and we will pray for you live on the air today. And uh, any other prayer requests we may have at the end of the service, we're going to pray live. So get that prayer request in. Be ready for communion. We're going yeah. to have live communion as always. That's right. And again, as you said, you while the Lord is ministering to you, make sure you get those prayer requests in. And uh, our prayer team leader, Terry, will be helping us with that. Pastor, I'm going to step away and let you, thank you. Uh, minister. Praise God. Love you all. Thank you. you bet. Don't go far. I'm, I'm going to sit you, right here, Pastor. Wow, I'm excited. Praise God. Pastor Sharon, are you excited? Oh. <laughs> he goes, oh, let's stop that. I, I think I am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knocked my, my computer down. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, see, Z team, you got to stay on your toes. The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. You never know when the Lord's going to come or call. Praise God. We're going to be talking about angels today. If you believe in angels, give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Praise Amen. God. For Bravo. Amen. You, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hear him and delivers them. Praise yes. God. They're here to fight your battles. They're here to bear you up in their arms, lest you dash your foot against a stone. They go to and from heaven, bringing messengers, bringing deliverance. I believe in angels. The Bible lists nine categories of angels. And of course, there's cherubim and seraphim and archangels and powers and so forth. I'm not going to go through that list, but I do believe in angels. I've experienced angelic visitation. It was not a figment of my imagination. It was absolutely real. And uh, I just, uh, I'm convinced that we can increase, that you can increase angelic traffic in your life if you'll do what I share with you today in the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you for blessing everyone who's watching, listening, hearing, receiving, achieving what you have for us. I thank you for using me and allowing me to stand in the office that you've called me into. Any gifts or graces that you want to release today through this vessel, I will be the first to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Saints, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Make some noise. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord, Lord. I will Hallelujah. rejoice and be yeah. glad in yeah. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, let's jump right into the Word of God. Last week, we talked about dangerous offerings. It was a little bit of a different kind of a message, but it is revelatory. It is the truth, and we understand more today after last week, the importance of, of offerings and even a danger associated with offerings. And we left with this thought, and that is that Satan tempted Jesus and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, all of this is yours if you'll just bow down and worship me. So the question I have for you today, think about this, is why would Satan be more interested in people worshiping him than he is in all the wealth of all the kingdoms of the world? Now, remember, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they actually abdicated their position as the kings of this planet. God had given them dominion over this planet, and Satan usurped that title, and he set himself up as the god of this world, little g, right? The demigod of this world. And so all of the nations of this world and all the wealth of this world has come under his control at one time or another. And he's very willing to share that wealth with people who will do his will. 
Yet he would give it all up in a moment if we would worship him. Wow. If Jesus had worshiped him, Satan would have gladly exchanged all the wealth that he had right then. So here's my question. Why? What is so important about worship that Lucifer himself would trade everything for just that moment of worship? Heavy thought, isn't it? Yes. All right, let's talk about the will of Satan, what his intentions are. Isaiah 14, 13, I'm going to give you five wills of Satan. He is self-willed. He is determined. And he said in Isaiah 14, 13, I will ascend into heaven. In other words, he's not there right now, is he? He's down here. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. I will sit in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Wow. Satan wants to, actually wants to have God's position. He wants to remove God from the throne and set himself on the throne. He actually believes that he should be God, that he could do a better job at running the universe than God could. What, what kind of pride is that? What kind of vanity is that? Amazing that he would want to ascend above God, okay? That's his motivation. Ever since he was kicked out of heaven, he was kicked out of heaven because he led a rebellion against God. And Michael and his angels had a war with Lucifer and his angels. It was uh, two to three, or yeah, uh, th two to three. And uh, twice as many with us, three times as many with us as there are with them. And Michael and his angels, the angels of God, kicked Lucifer out of heaven and he was cast down to the earth. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning cast down to the earth. Lucifer was cast out of heaven, and where did he go? He came to this earth, and he came here before Adam and Eve were created. He was already here. I'll get to that. Wow. Ezekiel 28, 12. Now, now listen to this. I'm going to say something. I'm not bragging on the devil. I'm just telling you what the Bible says so that you'll understand your enemy. He is a formidable foe. Jesus said, I have come to destroy the works of the devil. Now, if we could have destroyed the works of the devil on our own, then Jesus would not have had to come to this planet. Amen. But he had to come to conquer him who had conquered us. Yes. He came here to destroy the works of the devil. Now, yes. here's what the Bible says about the devil. Isaiah 28, 12, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom. He's a lot smarter than people. A lot smarter than people. People on their own, without the mind of Christ, without the Holy Ghost, the devil's smarter than them. There's no one on this planet who is more clever, more devious than the devil. We need to understand that he is a formidable foe and he's not playing around. He's playing for keeps. The, uh, it's a life and death struggle. It's more than life and death. It's eternal life and eternal damnation. So we need to be aware of what the devices of the devil are. Amen. Now then, you said, well, I, I thought you were going to talk about, about uh, angels. <laughs> Lucifer was an angel. Yeah. He falls into this category. A fallen angel, a wicked angel, but nevertheless, he Amen. was an angel. He was the sum of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Uh, you know, people depict artists in the movies and everything. They depict Satan as being this grotesque, horrible-looking monster. <laughs> no, no, no. Very attractive. Hypnotically attractive. Mesmerizing. He loves pomp and circumstance. He loves to dazzle. He loves to be seen. He loves to be admired. And God created him as the sum of wisdom and beauty. That was the handiwork of God in him. You have been in Eden in the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. 
the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire and the emerald and the carbuncle and gold. Now, what you have to understand about the devil is he is a reptile. He's called the dragon or the serpent. Jesus called him that old dragon, the red dragon, you know, that old dragon. And he, he in the book of uh, Genesis, I think there are five or six times he's called the serpent. He is a reptile. That means that he doesn't have warm blood. He doesn't have the feelings and the emotions that you and I have. His brain is not built like your brain or my brain is. He doesn't have a mammalian brain. We're created in the image of God, and Jesus is the image of the Father, so we know what the Father looks like. We look at ourselves. That's what he looks like. He has a throne he sits on. He has a footstool. He stretches out his arm. He smells the fragrance of our worship. He listens to our prayers. His eyes upon his beloved. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and you and I are created in the image of God. Satan is in a different category altogether. He's a reptile. He's reptilian, and he's alien. He's not from this planet. People say, do you believe in aliens? Yes, I do. He's called Lucifer, and he comes from another part of the universe, another dimension, and he was cast down to this planet before Adam and Eve were created. He was already there when Adam and Eve were created. Now then, his body was covered, encrusted with these precious jewels, diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and so forth. Like a, a serpent or a lizard. You've seen these colorful lizards that have five or six or more different colors. You've seen probably pictures of snakes that have five or six or more colors. They're dazzling, they're creepy, <laughs> but they're beautiful because they have all these scales of different colors. You, uh, you have to understand this about Lucifer, and I'll, I'll say a little bit more about this. He likes to have attention. One of his former jobs was you know, uh, leading worship in the congregation. He's musical, I'll get to that. And so it was important for him to have all this radiance around him. Now he was not a producer of light, he was a reflector of light. He didn't have, he didn't emanate life, he didn't light, he didn't broadcast light. He reflected the light of God. And if you look at the entertainers who are on the stages of the big venues of the world, they all they usually wear something that's dazzling, something that shimmers and shines and sequins and rhinestones. And when the lights hit them, they light up. Wow. See, that's Lucifer found that out a long time ago, that he could dazzle everyone with this beauty, these carbuncles and diamonds and emeralds and rubies. When he walked, there were flashes of light. It was dazzling. Now let's get to the musical part. The workmanship of thy tabarets, those are percussive instruments. And of those, your pipes, those are wind instruments, were prepared in thee in the day that you were created. We also know he has stringed instruments built inside of him because it says so in Isaiah 14. So here's the deal. He's, he's dazzling because he has all these jewels and he has percussion instruments built inside of him, organs of percussion, like a bullfrog or a whale or a dinosaur, he can produce these tremendous sounds. And he has the sounds of violins, stringed instruments. They say that the closest instrument to the human voice is the violin, because our larynx is a stringed instrument. And then he had pipes where he could trumpet and make these sounds. So when he walked, it was a light show, and it was also music. He could, he could produce sounds that we've never heard on earth, and that's what he did in heaven, and he was full of himself. He believed his own PR. He liked the attention, and because of the multitude of his merchandise, he was corrupted and became sinful. You see, he worshiped himself instead of God. His focus was on himself instead of God. Yeah. 
My Lord. This is the height of vanity, and this is what cost him his place in heaven. God had created him, and he forgot that he was a creation of God. He thought he was a son of God. No, no, no. He's he's he was probably at most number four in the hierarchy. He's not a part of the Trinity. He's not part of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He was an angel, the anointed cherub that covereth. We'll keep reading. Praise God. How many of you are getting something out of this already? Praise this is God. good. Amen. Praise God. Verse 14. You are the anointed cherub, that's an angel, that covereth. In other words, he had something to do with worship. He had a place of leadership in worship, covering. You know, like we have pastors who cover our congregation. We have elders who cover our congregation. We have team leaders who cover. And there is this hierarchy of covering. Well, Lucifer had a position where he covered the things of the sanctuary. He was right up there where he could watch God and see all the glory and be a part of the whole thing. Spiritual pride is the original sin. We all say that, you know, Adam and Eve created the original sin. They really didn't. Lucifer committed the original sin, and it was called pride, P-R-I-D-E, spiritual pride. Help us, Lord. And there are a lot of people today who are lifted up in spiritual pride. They just feel like they're more anointed than others, that they have a deeper revelation than others, that God favors them more than others. Listen, I've been in the ministry a long, long time, and I've seen all of that stinking pride I want to see, and it's so easy to spot. Everybody can see it except the people who are blinded by their own pride. It just stands out like a sore thumb. We need to examine ourselves and make sure that we're not in pride. If God uses us, let's give him the glory. He wants to use you for miracles. He wants to use you with authority. He wants to use you for his kingdom, but you can't take the glory for yourself. We can't take the honor for ourselves. We must give the glory to God. Let me hear an amen. 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 Yeah. Praise God. Amen. You are the anointed cherub that covered. I've set thee so. You are upon the holy mountain of God. You've walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the multitude of your merchandise, they, the merchandise, has filled the midst of thee with violence, and you have sinned, and I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God. My Lord. Lucifer was cast from heaven all the way to the planet Earth. And he will not leave this planet until he goes to hell. And he will go to hell with all of his fallen angels, all of his cohorts, all of his minions, all of those who do his will, all of those who've rejected Christ, all of those who've refused to receive the grace and mercy of God, all of those God-haters are going to hell. Listen to this. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not prepared for human beings. Nope. Hell was prepared for the fallen angels, for Lucifer and the fallen angels. That's why God created a hell, not to punish people, but to incarcerate Lucifer so that the damage he was doing to the universe would stop and he could never do it again. However, Lucifer has dragged multitudes into his hell with him. My Lord, help us. Help us, God. There you go. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible says that when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, he came to the earth having great wrath. He was angry. Something so catastrophic happened when Lucifer was cast down to the earth. Something cataclysmic happened, and it caused chaos, and it caused the world to be uninhabited. And God had to begin creation anew, and he created Adam and Eve, and he put Adam on this planet in this garden, and he gave him dominion, and he told him to take dominion, to subdue, 
and to replenish. Now let's go through that. Why would you have to take dominion unless there was already a, a rebellion? Right. Why would you have to subdue unless things were chaotic and they had to be brought back into order? And why would you have to replenish unless things had been plenished, destroyed, and now needed to be replenished? Yes, there was something destructive that happened on this planet before Adam and Eve came, and God gave Adam the assignment of taking dominion over the rebellion, subduing and bringing order out of chaos, and replenishing, bringing forth life out of death. Now, what did, how did all those bad things happen? It happened when Lucifer was cast out of heaven. And why was Adam put here? To take charge, to control Lucifer, to limit Lucifer. Adam was the warden. Lucifer was the prison. Planet Earth was the penal colony. And like every prison, you can't escape. There's a barrier, there's a blockade, there are walls, there are doors, there are gates, and Lucifer is trapped on this planet. The Bible has a word for it. It calls it the brazen skies. There's something surrounding this planet that keeps Lucifer, the fallen cherub, here where he can't go back to heaven. He's limited to the atmosphere of this planet. He is the prince of the power of the air. He can go so far and no further. Praise Jane God. Irwin was a Christian man, spirit-filled Christian astronaut who walked on the moon, Apollo 11. And he said, I have never felt more of the power of God and the peace of God anywhere except the moon. And wow. I thought to myself, yes, because that's beyond the brazen sky. That's beyond L Lucifer's jurisdiction. He can't go Amen. there. He's Praise stuck God. here. <laughs> Thank God. you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, let's keep reading. Is this good? Yes. All right, that, was part, that was part one. Let's go to part two. Now then, let's talk about this brazen sky. I'll explain this in a moment, but there is something it's called a brazen or a brass sky. God says, if you're disobedient to, to my word, thy heavens above thy head shall be as brass, Deuteronomy 28, 23, and, and the earth beneath your feet is iron. That's living between a rock and a hard place. And that's where a lot of people live. The earth is like iron. It doesn't produce for them. And the heavens are like brass. It seems like they, they can't get through to heaven. They don't have an open heaven. Well, there is a way to open the heavens, and you know what it is. It's Malachi 3, right? Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be, be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angels. We're talking about angels today in the track of angels, how to get angels in your life. They're on alert. They're ready to come. But you and I have something to do. Bring all the tithes into my storehouse, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open to you windows in the heavens. In other words, passageways through this brazen barrier that keeps Lucifer here. I'll open that up like the sally port, and I, the, the, the Lord of hosts, will bring blessings down from heaven into you, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. One translation for the word windows uses the word hatchways. I like that. See if I won't open it to you. Hatchways in the sky and pour you out more blessings and you know what to do with it. Heaven has everything you need. Every good thing comes from heaven. But the secret is getting it from heaven here. And there's something in between the heaven and the earth that God put there to limit the jurisdiction of the devil, the movement of the devil. He can move Praise around God. on this earth. You know, uh, God said, where have you been? He said, I've been walking to and fro on the earth. The devil walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But he can ascend only so far, just in the very thin atmosphere of this planet, which is uh, relative to the skin of an apple. 
If you look at an apple and you peel the skin back, that's how much atmosphere surrounds this planet. And that's where Lucifer is limited to just this, you know, uh, 80, 90,000 feet. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So God says, bring the tithes, bring the offerings, and I'll open the hatchways in the sky. Now, I want to talk to you about Jacob for a moment, Jacob's ladder. Genesis 28, 12, Jacob dreamed a dream. It was a dream from God. And behold, a ladder set upon the earth. I'm going to talk about that word ladder. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it, upon this he called it a ladder. Actually, in the Hebrew, it is called a highway. That's a different picture. A highway, a passageway from heaven to earth. The route by which angels come from heaven to earth. And Jacob said, these are the gates of heaven. So here we have a highway and a hatchway. And when the hatchway is open, the angels come down the highway. And they go up the highway, and the hatchway is open, and they go back to heaven. They have to stop at that hatchway. They can't open the hatchway. Only you and I have the keys that will open the hatchway. You are the one who controls the traffic of angels. Just like Rahab allowed the spies of Israel to come into the city through her window, you've got a window, and you may identify with Rahab, a lowly little prostitute, but she had enough presence of mind to recognize the servants of God, and she allowed them, who were, in a, in a metaphor, angels, she allowed them to come in. Through her window, you know, you might think that you'd have to be some super holy person to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, to usher in the presence of God. A little prostitute did it because she had control over her window and she gave the servants of God access into her world, into her city through her window. Are you getting it? Say yes. amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm a little wound up here. Yes, you are. Praise God. Uh, Daniel. 10, 13, I'm not going to spend much time there, but uh, Daniel had been praying and fasting for 21 days for the deliverance of Israel from Babylon. And after 21 days, uh, one of the angels showed up. It was the angel Gabriel. And he said, Daniel, <laughs> we heard you praying 21 days ago, and I've come for your prayers. Now, 21 days, what's been going on for 21 days? I've been fasting and praying for 21 days. You're just now showing up. He said, well, the prince of Persia, a demon, a demonized angel, withstood me for 21 days. And I could not get through until Michael, one of our chief princes, came and fought with me. And now I'm come to your words. Now think about that. How could a principality, a, 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 an, evil, an evil spirit with his minions and armies, this is a high-powered demon spirit that was over Babylon, there's one over Grecia, there's one over Babylon, there's over Russia, over the United States. Every country has a, a demon hierarchy. Above uh, Buckingham Palace, there are demons. Above the White House, there are demons. There, there are demons who control. And, and Lucifer said that. He said, I'll give this all to you if you worship me. And when Daniel and his angels tried to come, I mean, uh, uh, that Gabriel, tried to come to Daniel with his angels, he couldn't get through. Why? I mean, if he could come from any direction on the azimuth he wanted to, he could just sneak in through Arabia or Africa or across the Mediterranean. But apparently he had, to go, he had to come through a narrow passageway, and it was at that place, that passage, where the demons of Persia were able to stop him. Remember the old cowboy movies? Let's head them off at the pass, boys. You want to get your enemy in a constricted area. That was one of uh, Alexander the Great's tactics. He would always strategically get his enemy in a canyon or in an isthmus or someplace where they couldn't maneuver, and then he would uh, attack. He could use a smaller army to defeat a larger army, and this is what Satan has done for millennia. He has positioned demons 
beneath the windows of heaven to stop the angels of God from coming. And do you know how he stops the angels from God? He stops God's people from opening the windows. And if he can stop you and stop me from opening our windows, he can stop the angels from coming and going. Oh, Lord, help us. So it, it, it all comes back to us. Praise the Lord. Is it okay if I keep reading? Yes. All right, I have one amen there. Oh, well, ah. I'm obligated. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to end with this one. Judges 13, 19. Um, let me just paraphrase it. Manoah's wife. Now, Manoah and her husband were the parents of Samson. Mm -hmm. They couldn't have children. They were old. And one day, Manoah's wife was out doing some things, and an angel appeared to her. She, she wasn't sure it was an angel at first. And he told her that you're going to have a son, and he told her all about the son. And wow, this blew her mind. So she ran into her husband. His name is Manoah. And she said, I saw this man, and he told me that we were going to have a child, and his name was going to be Samson, he's going to be a deliverer. And, and being a typical husband, Manoah said, well, I, I want to hear this for myself. So he goes out, and he said, are you the, are you the one that talked to my wife? And the angel said, yes, I am. And the angel said, well, I want to hear it. And the angel repeated it word for word. And so Manoah said, well, when this comes to pass, what's your name? So that when this comes to pass, we can honor you. Now, listen, we don't worship angels. We don't. That's a big mistake. Big, big. big. Amen. And Amen. the angel said, no, don't worship me, worship God. And he said, but why do you ask me my name? You couldn't pronounce it if I told you. <laughs> That's literally what it says. So Manoah built an altar, a big, big altar. And he loaded it up with wood. Now, he's out here in the desert moving stones around, giant stones, building an altar. No one is telling him to do it. He's moved because he has a heart for God. And after he builds this big altar, he goes up and gathers wood. Now he's in the desert, right? So he's ranging far and near and adding wood and adding wood and adding wood. And he puts a big bar of wood here and he lights it on fire. He puts an offering on it, a sacrificial offering. He lights it on fire. Can you imagine the flames? It is a tornado of flames going up. The smoke is going up hundreds of feet. You could probably see it for miles and miles in the desert. Wow. And while the flames of this sacrifice that Manoah gave to God were going up toward heaven, the angel did wondrously. He stepped up on the altar, stepped into the middle of the fire, and wow. ascended into heaven. Wow. How did the angel ascend into heaven? In the glory of the sacrifice that Manoah offered to God. Wow. I'm going to repeat it. How Praise did they ascend? Jesus said, you'll see angels ascending and descending. Jacob saw them ascending and descending. How is it that angels get to heaven? When we worship God, they come and go. That's their ticket. To get on the glory train, I didn't say the gravy train, the glory train and ascend into heaven. And while they're going up, another batch are coming down. God doesn't leave the windows of heaven open. That would be a disaster. The enemy would escape. So he leaves them closed. That's the default position. But you and I have the keys to the kingdom. And when we worship God out of a heart of love, then the glory goes up towards heaven, and that's what gets God's attention. That's what's important to God, the glory. When we give him glory, you know, some things we do don't give God glory. People do things out of lip service. They do things out of eye service. They do things out of tradition. They do things out of habit. They do things out of disobedience. They do things because they're confused. But when we do the right thing for the right reason, and we offer up a sacrifice to God in obedience with our whole heart, then a glory rises into heaven and the windows of heaven open, and our glory keeps going until it's in the throne room wow. of God where it's a sweet-smelling wow. fragrance. And it's wow. this connection of worship and sacrificing to God that goes from heaven to earth that creates a highway 
that angels can descend and ascend upon. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Come on. Abraham asked God. Thank you, my dear. I'm, I'm at the end here. Abraham asked God, how will I know that I'm going to have an heir, a child? And God said, bring me an offering. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you know, it's, wait a second, we're not talking about offerings. We're talking about me having a child, a son. I really want a son. Uh, how will I know that I'm going to have a son? God says, bring me an offering. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get on the same page here, God. I want a son. I'm asking you for a son. My question is, how will I know for a certainty that you're going to give me a son, God says, I gave you the answer, how you will know. Bring me an offering. Now, I, I want you to think God. about this. I want you to think about this. You know, so many times people criticize preachers. We're doing our sacerdotal duty when we receive offerings and tithes. Yeah. That's what we do. We receive tithes and offerings of the people and we offer them up to God. Yeah. That's, that's what we're called to do, among other things, but that's one of our important functions. Yes. So don't criticize preachers for doing what God has instructed them to do. If we didn't do it, if we listened to people and the critics, we would be in disobedience to God, and that wouldn't be good. I'm not ashamed to receive tithes and offerings. In fact, I love doing it because I know it's going to bless people if they'll do it right. What I'm really doing is helping people receive a blessing. Amen. So uh, God says to Abraham, uh, bring me an offering. And he said, wait a second, not just any offering. I want you to bring me a goat three years old, a heifer three years old, a ram three years old, and a turtle dove and a pigeon. Now, he's very specific about this. Yes. And God will be very specific with you when it comes to a special offering. He'll tell you exactly what to do. And it may be more than you want to do. That's why it's called a sacrifice. That's why it takes faith. That's why it requires obedience. He will ask us sometimes for things that are difficult for us to do, but he wouldn't ask us to do it if we didn't have the ability to do it. Okay? So God says, Amen. bring a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old uh, heifer, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. Now I'm preaching in California in a small church, and the preacher's on the front row, and I'm walking by, and I'm talking about the three-year-old goat, the three-year-old heifer, and every time I'm in front of him and I would look him in the eyes, I'd bend down and look at him and say, and a three-year-old ram, and this preacher would jump. I remember that. Now, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm just under the anointing, so I'm walking back and forth, and I did this over and over. I would say, God asked him for a three-year-old she-goat. He, he asked him for a three-year-old heifer. And then I get in this preacher's face and I would say, and a three-year-old ram. And he would jump. This went on and on. And he came up to me and he's just almost in tears. He said, my God. He said, God has been dealing with me to sow my, my Dodge Ram pickup. Three-year-old. Three-year-old pickup. My three-year-old Dodge Ram pickup, he's been telling me to give it, and I didn't want to. And every time you came by me, you said, three-year-old Ram, bam. He said, I got to obey God. I said, yeah, I think you do. I think I'll be able to obey God. Last time I saw him, he was driving uh, a Maybach. Yeah, he went to a different level there. Praise God. You don't know what that is. It's most expensive, custom-made Mercedes you can buy. Maybach. He went to the ram. You see how that works? Yes. Praise God. So let me answer the question. Why does Satan want worship? Because he wants to get back to heaven, and he knows about the highway. Huh. He knows about the hatchways. Wow. He knows that it's worship that summons the angels, and it's worship upon which, the, the glory of the worship upon which the angels ascend into heaven. He's an angel. He knows about the angel highway. Mm. And he thinks if you can, if he could have gotten Jesus to worship him, he thought he would go straight back to the throne room My and Lord. pick up where he left off. My Lord. He would trade anything to get back into a place where people worship him, where he's the focus 
the center of attention. Let me tell you Praise something. God. Any disobedience we have towards God when it comes to giving My and Lord. offerings, the Lucifer takes takes that as a perverted praise for him. Oh my God. They fear me more than they fear God. They fear sickness and death and poverty more than they fear God. And he wants to accuse the brethren before God. Look at your people. They don't have the courage to give. They don't have the courage to worship you with their highest and best. That's how he thinks. My Lord. He thought if he could get humanity to worship him, hmm. and I'm sure it's still in his mind today, if enough people on this planet do his will and obey him, mm. it's not going to happen, believe you me, mm. but in his demented mind, that could be his way out of here. Mm. No. 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 A thousand times no. No, no. There's only one more direction he's going, and it's not up. No. Nope. It's down. The gates of hell are the only gates he's going through, yep. and when they close, they're not going to open up again. Never again. Amen. Oh, praise God, saints, you picked the right side. You're on the winning side. You're on the side of victory. You're on the side of prosperity. You're on the side of freedom. And it really comes down to us taking responsibility that God has given us. He gave responsibility and authority to Adam. It was lost. But Jesus' obedience We've regained it. He's given us authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt or harm us. Okay. How do you Amen. get more traffic of angels in your life? Through tithes and offerings, through sacrificial giving, through obedience in your giving. If you are limited in your giving, then you limit the angelic traffic in your life. There's no need to complain. When Abraham asked God, how shall I know? God said, bring me an offering. And all of us have questions. All of us have needs. And here's God's answer. Bring me an offering. Bring me an offering. Praise God. Abraham put his sacrifice on the fire and a smoke came up and a burning lamp passed through that smoke. And in that moment, God stepped into Abraham's world through that flame and cut the covenant with him. And he said, in you, all nations will be blessed. Did you know that that covenant was cut through that sacrifice? Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I know we're going to have communion, but we're going to reverse the order of things. I feel it would be right to give you an opportunity oh, to obey yes, God. Yes. I'm going to invite Pastor Loretta to come up here. Are you okay? I'm fine, Pastor. Just yeah. all right? Yeah. Oh, this is powerful. Uh, you know, last week we were talking and, and Elder Bob said, there's really not much I can say about the offering. It's already been said. And I, I understand, Elder Bob, but it's time to obey God with our tithes and offerings. And I'm not preaching to the choir right now. Our Z team are faithful givers. Wonderful. I'm, I'm preaching to you on Facebook and YouTube who've been feeding on this good word that I've been giving you. Some of you have been feeding for a long time. Mm. And you've never honored God or blessed us with an offering. Mm. And the Bible says if we've sown spiritual things, we have a right to, to expect Carnal things. The the workman is worthy of his hire. We give double honor to those who labor in the word. So yeah, you can give your money anywhere. But today I have been feeding you. Yeah. And you don't go, you know, eat at the one restaurant and give it another. You give where you eat. And if you have Amen. been feeding on the word of God here today, you need to honor God right here at Z Church. Yes. Yes. So we're going to pray, and God's going to talk to you. And then I want you to obey God instantly. He's going to give you a number, just like he gave my friend instructions about the ram. God has given my wife and me specific numbers many times. Yes. And it's always exciting when we get a specific number because the gift of faith comes with it. Yes. How will I know? How will I know? How will I, know? How will I be certain? How will I have a gift of faith? Yeah. Through the offering. Now then. 
when you give, you can go to zchurch.life forward slash give. We're also going to put up a link in the chat section. Father, I thank you right now for everyone, everyone, everyone who's watching and listening, who's heard this word about angels on alert. They've heard how to get more angels into their lives more often. And it depends upon our obedience, their yes. obedience. Yes. So, Father, I pray that you'll give a specific word to everyone who's listening and watching. Yes, yes. And if they don't hear a specific word, let them just follow after peace. After peace. All the ways of wisdom are peace and pleasantness. Yes, yes. If you follow after peace, sometimes our offering's too small. We don't have peace. Sometimes it's too big and we don't, and we don't have, have peace. peace. But that sweet spot, you'll have peace. Yes. So you want to obey God. When you follow after peace, you're obeying the Prince of Peace. Yes, yes. So, Father, I think if everyone who's watching and listening, either today, right now, live, maybe they're listening a month from now, but now is the time you need to do something for yourself by unlocking your window above your heavens so you can receive your blessing in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Brother Bob, go ahead and roll our giving tape, and then when we come back, we're going to have live giving. time for uh, to, to celebrate what our Lord Jesus uh, has done for us, what the law couldn't uh, do for us, Jesus did for us. And like Pastor Larry said, um, the devil was full of himself, is self-righteous, self-aware. And what the law does, it just reminds us of our shortcomings. It reminds us of our sins, and it makes us self-aware, self-conscious, and full of ourselves, and it fills us with pride. But Jesus, Jesus intervened, and he paid a sacrifice once and for all, for all of our sins. And because of his blood, our conscience is cleansed from sins. Amen. And so we thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. We thank you for your body bruised, broken, and burnt on our behalf. And we take this in remembrance of what you have done for us. Let us eat the bread. My favorite words in the, in the entire Bible are when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Take your eyes off yourself. The law will put your eyes back on yourself. Take your eyes off yourself. Put them on me. That's mm -hmm. good. Very good. Very good. And he shed his blood for the remission of our sins. And now we can we have we can have full assurance, full assurance that he paid for everything that our sins have been re, uh, have been washed away, and full assurance of faith. Not full assurance in what we have done, but full assurance of faith. Let's take um, 
we'll celebrate his sacrifice and drink of his blood. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Jesus. We are going to pray live right now. So if we have any prayer requests, uh, pass those to Pastor Reddish. She's going to take charge of this part of the service. Amen. And we bless you, Pastor. You, you really gave a lot to us. And uh, we just praise God. Uh, unmute yourself before we do, uh, before Terry gives me that uh, prayer request. And let's just give God glory for the Hallelujah. glory that God gave us. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if Amen. anyone who's listening uh, now or later and you are experiencing a loss of a loved one, just take that prayer and know that God is there with you and he will comfort you. We speak comfort to you yes. in the name of Jesus. Is there more, um, uh, Terry, please? Yes, let's pray for Joseph's wife uh, that says she's not feeling well. Okay, Pastor Sharon, would you pray for her, please? Lord, we just lift up Rowena to you. We thank you so much for her life and Thank you that you quicken her mortal body in the name of Jesus, that healing uh, flows into her and affects a cure in Jesus' name. We thank you for that strengthening and empowerment in Jesus' name, and we praise amen, you for it. Amen and amen. And anyone who's listening right now, and if you're dealing with any symptoms of flu or COVID or any other type of symptom, just because uh, Pastor Sharon prayed for Rowena, that prayer can go all the way uh, over this entire universe. You know, I used to love how uh, uh, Pastor or Elder Dick Mills, uh, the minister Dick Mills, he would say, okay, you got that word, but you know what? You can say, I take it for myself. And that's exactly what I'm encouraging you to do. Perry, do we have any more? Mm -hmm. Yes, I received this from a friend. Um, it's for a six-year-old girl named Carly. In the last 30 days, her and her parents' lives have been turned upside down by cancer. Her oh. father is an atheist. His name is Ray. And a, a dear friend has been talking to him about the Lord. And so let's just inter ask God to intervene with a miracle for Carly and her family. Okay, uh, Terry, I'm going to ask you to go ahead because you know the family. Please. Father, we just lift up Carly to you. Father, we pray for complete healing in her body. We command this cancer, get out. In Thank Jesus' you. name, fill her with your life, Father. We pray complete healing for her. And we ask for her dad, Father, that he be saved, Father. That he come into the kingdom yes. and know your love in the name of Jesus, Father, along with the whole family. We praise you and we thank you for a mighty movement, your movement upon this family in Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Are there any more, Terry? That's all. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Well, before we close, I'm just going to, is um, Javier, are you still available? And, and um, uh, Anna Marie? Yes, we are here. Okay. Why don't you pray for Peru? Good. Heavenly Father. Bring your love, take away all hate, all fear, all uh, conflict. Okay. Uh, yes, let your will be done here on Peru. Let your kingdom come over the, the people who are directing these riots. Take, uh, let your kingdom come into the authorities that have to deal with them. Yeah. Uh, so that we can all talk, we can have dialogues, we can have good solutions. Yes. Uh, there are more Christians in mm -hmm. the places of power, more Christians between the people who are directing uh, the ones that are in the riot, uh, more Christians in the authority, more Christians in general, that your kingdom is spread in Peru because yes. only you can save us only yes, yes. you can deal with this not any political movement not anything not any person only you we need glory to you because glory. you love Peru because mm -hmm. there are so many Christians so many churches here in Jesus name amen amen, amen. we believe amen. pray God I'm not going to prolong this we could just I've just uh definitely uh um, sensing to be uh, prompted in my spirit. I have two things, and then if there's nothing else, we will um, announcements. Now, um, is before I ask for Elder Bob to pray for uh, the United States, and just for all that's going on there and, and other places uh, in the hotspots. Z Ting, here's your chance. 
Do you ha anyone have a prayer request that you haven't had a chance to or someone you want to pray about? Please let, uh, let me know. Speak up. Okay. Elder Bob. And after Elder Bob, uh, we'll have our announcements. Elder Bob. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, Lord God. Please we God. just thank you. And, and we appreciate the United States of America that you have given us for a purpose for a purpose. It did not come into being by accident, but you have a purpose for it. And we, we by your authority, Jesus, in your stead, on your behalf, and in your name, lay claim to these United States of America for the purpose for which you gave them to be birthed and established in the earth, a place that the gospel has gone out from, where, where liberty has been has been seen and known like never before since the fall of man on, on the earth. And we know that you still have a purpose that you want to accomplish here. And by the authority of Jesus, we lay claim to these United States and we say, Satan, hands off. We command in Jesus' name, the United States of America be released to the kingdom of God for the purpose for which it was established and for him to use for his kingdom purposes in the earth and to his glory in Jesus name we speak over every leader of these United States and we don't curse but we say that it is God's will for all men to be saved you have grace and opportunity to come to him and and repent and be his instruments and we pray Lord God that you you give to us your people repentance always that's been the key will your people called by your name repent yes. and submit to your will and seek your plan and i and i pray for all of us all of our yes. brethren with us we we offer ourselves to repent of whatever you'll show us to correct and get in line with your plan in jesus name amen jesus name. Amen. amen praise god praise god thank you bob that was wonderful I do have a few announcements before the afterglow begins. Uh, we invite you to visit our website, zchurch.life. You'll find the Z Church blog and all of our past services there, and they'll encourage you. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll also find the Zoom links for our Zoe group meetings. If you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team, you can email info at zchurch.life. There are many opportunities available, and there's a place for you. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly, and our host today is Christine. If you would like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. And if you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know, and they'll bring your question into the discussion. We'd also appreciate any feedback you can give us about the service. And now, right before the Afterglow begins, I believe there's a special video uh, next from Maria. I've been asked, why Z Church? Because at Z Church, you'll find more than just Christianity which could be mere philosophy or a good lifestyle. More than born again faith, which is salvation through Christ, present and to infinity. More than spirit-filled overflow, which is witnessing and life empowerment. More than word of faith, which is godly character and spiritual maturity. See, church is a sample of what the Church of Christ should be. And we are reaching out further to be part of that glorious, without spot or wrinkle, holy and blameless church he'll present to himself. All invited. Hallelujah. That was good. Well, welcome to the Afterglow. Just a reminder about our three-minute rule. So let's just jump in and have some fun. Who would like to begin by sharing something they got from this message? Hello. Um, I just want to say hello to everyone. It's really lovely to see you all. It's not always easy for me to join every weekend in person. Hey, hey, hey. I love you all. And thank you, Larry and Loretta, for this wonderful message. I really love uh, knowing that uh, God sent his angels around us 
and how we have uh, authority in Christ. And uh, when we tithe, we are, of, of course, we are ensuring that uh, what he has inherited for us, his protection, his divine covering is over our lives, over every aspect. And yeah, I'm just thankful these are important truths to have in our hearts. And um, yeah, it's wonderful. Thank can, you. Can I say something about the big day? Yes. Okay, well, I think everybody knows that Earl proposed to Marianne and she said yes. Yes. <laughs> and they are going to be married in Barcelona. I get to I get the honor of solemnizing it. And she and her mama, Anna Marie, are going to come to Barcelona to work on the venue and all the little details. So uh, I'm very excited about it. And that's a Let's all tell Marianne we love her and we're happy for her. Hey, man. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. congratulations. Love you, Marianne. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. Congratulations. Amen. All right. Who else is ready to speak up? Come on. <laughs> well, you know, Christina, it doesn't have to be about the message. It could be about anything. Well, it, it could be about the message, but she said only three minutes. I could go on for an hour about the message. <laughs> that's a, that's a, my introduction. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> go for Praise it, Bob. God. Praise <laughs> God. I, there, there are so many different things that just sort of lit a light bulb and 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 gave some new insights. And and uh, but I, I I am so caught up in this thing about the the windows of heaven and the, and the shields around the earth um and it's been coming through to me more and more in in some recent years what's going on there and one of the one of the places where i realized the body of christ has had it really backwards e even among faith people that that we always pray oh lord open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing and our mind is always seeing heaven the place heaven being closed and god is withholding blessing and saying no you sinners don't deserve it but maybe if you pray hard enough, I'll open a little window for a little blessing to slip out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not on his end. And no. in fact, he pointed out to me a while back there, that passage uh, where Jesus said for, that God is good and makes his rain to fall on the just and the unjust. God isn't holding anything back, even okay. from the unjust, even the sinners. Mm -hmm. it, it'd be raining blessing on anybody who would let it. But there's stuff that we have to do, like we were taught today, to open the windows over the earth. So the blessing God is pouring out of heaven can get through the, the covering of the earth and get into us. And and too often we're we're listening to Satan's um I, it, to telling us to do things to block the blessing. I heard some years ago that uh um I think it was Jesse Duplantis who called sin the blessing blocker. And Satan convinces us to do sins or fear, doubt, unbelief, different things to like block the blessing and get get those heavens shut again. And it's like like we're putting up an umbrella over ourselves to, to block the blessing. God is pouring it out. It's raining everywhere. But are you doing something that's putting up an umbrella? So, that's good, <laughs> okay. Bob. You got it, man. That's good. <laughs> yeah, the part that stepped out to me was there are demons under your window. It's like, what? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he said that, you know, disobeying to give an amount that God's asked you to is worshiping Satan. It's like, uh oh, that's a wake up right there. It's like, yeah. hey, attention, people. You know, yeah. God's prompting you to give. Go ahead and give it. Do it in yeah. obedience. Um, I probably preached that sermon, you know, in one variety or another a uh, hundred times. We have sermons like that that just are perennial. We just, uh, we preach them often, maybe not often, but from time to time. And Pastor Sharon has heard me preach it. And she said, I was hoping that you would preach about Manoah. And Manoah stands out to me because he built this altar and he put his sacrifice on it. The angel stepped into the middle of it and shot up into heaven. What a strong picture. Well, when I'm preaching this and I have time to work it, I have a story that I made up about a little angel I call Squeaky. <laughs> He's trying to get through to bless Stingy Bucks, this church guy. <laughs> and uh, 
it, it's a funny little story about this little cherubic angel and they grease him up with holy oil and they and they say, you got to get ready because we know stingy bucks and he's not going to give much and he's not going to give often. So you got as soon as this window opens, you got to go and <laughs> make sure you get it through. We're all going to shove. And so everybody gets around squeaking and they shove it. And and uh, so stingy bucks gives his little pittance and and the little flash of light and the window opens and closes faster than the shutter on a Japanese camera. But in that moment, <laughs> the angels shove him through and he squeaks through only to see all these demons who've been waiting on him. <laughs> and so he's very, he's a very, yeah. uh, uh, you know, resourceful angel and he, he dives and spins and turns. And when they try to grab a hold of him, he's oiled up with holy oil anyway. So anyway, um, Many, many people come up to me and they'll say, I remember squeaking. When are you going to preach about squeaking? Yeah. And they kind of forgot about the rest of the sermon. <laughs> yeah. You remember squeaking, don't you, Pastor Sharon? I sure do. I I remember when you preached that in Danville. And um, actually, I got a song that day. Um, and i forgotten a lot of the song. But the one line that I remember is in the glory of our giving your angel ascends. And I'll tell you that come back that comes back to me often. Ooh. The glory of our giving. Amen. Anyway, you did a great job yeah. today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. In the glory of our giving, the angels ascend. Wow. Yes. You better I'll remember never... that song. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never It'll forget, come. Brother uh, Huggins, when you preached that at our church. You had built up Manoa, and then all of a sudden you stood up on the, the front row. And it's like I could see the, <laughs> you know, the, the angel just ascending, you know, up into the, up and up through the fire because you had built up, you know, about the, the flames and the, the fire that was built. And then when he stepped up there, it was like, I could just see that angel just going straight up. I'll never forget that. Even, you know, sometimes I'll be thinking about angels and I'll think, you know, I remember that when he preached that. And that was you what, know, 20 a, years ago. The highest compliment you can give a preacher is that you remember it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. So Amen. Much for remembering. Well, God is good, isn't he? He is good. Amen. And and I believe in angels because I've seen them personally. Um, we my I I was the youth leader in our church at the time, and I took twenty five kids to the water park in Fresno, and they have one of these pools that that you get in and you just ride ride on a floating um, raft, and my daughter and my son was riding on this raft. And they turned the water up so high that it knocked them off. And they were they couldn't reach the bottom of this pool. And they were grabbing me and pulling me down. Well, out of nowhere, and I mean nowhere, this woman appeared. And she said, grab your son. I'll grab your daughter. And so we made our way up to the edge of the pool. And... She handed me my daughter and both my son and daughter were standing there looking at her. And all of a sudden she disappeared oh. out of, I mean, she was gone. And to this Great. day, I, I, it wasn't too long ago. We had a family dinner and I said, do you guys remember seeing that angel? And my daughter goes, Oh, I will never forget that. She wow. said she was the Great prettiest God. woman I've ever seen. But I remember her handing me to you, and then she was just gone. So you know, angel, you would you um, uh, entertain angels unaware, and I'm so thankful that the Lord was so mindful of us that day that He took care of us. Praise God. That is Praise a good God. story. I, I'm with you, Gail. I, no one, no one on this earth can. Talk me out of angels. I've had too yeah. many experiences, and the only way I can explain it, angels. Well, That's right. You know, 
I want to just say very no, you don't have to take it off. I project to the back, <laughs> to the back row area, probably. Yeah, it's so um, pretty. Yeah, yeah, I know, because you just love me. I tell you, there's nothing. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me just move off because it's not about me. <laughs> Uh, I really appreciate what I heard about uh, what Gail was sharing, because, you know, a lot of times uh, people will think either they believe in angels, they believe in them in a very goofy kind of manner, or they don't believe in them, or they believe them in some kind of spooky. But I have to tell you that um, more than once, um, angels have uh, been uh, intervene. Well, actually, I think they intervene every single day. I, do. I really do. I really, really do. Because the Bible says that he gives the, his angels charge over us to watch over us. You know, you should tell them about the time that we were in. I wanted to share this when we were in Mexico and you, uh, we were praying and we lived in this beautiful place the walls were at least a foot thick. I mean, they're just really thick, thick. And just talk about what the Lord gave you, I've showed you. And thank you so much, everyone, for your uh, your ministry. Uh, yeah, we were in our house in Guanajuato, Mexico, and it's on a it's actually on the top of a mountain. And uh, as Pastor Loretta said, the walls are made out of solid stone, and they were, you know, eighteen or twenty inches thick. And we were praying and singing in the spirit. And all of a sudden, the glory of God came into that house. And Pastor Loretta just fell on the floor. And when I looked up, I could see right through the walls like they were transparent. And I saw, wow. at first, I thought it was clouds, which we, don't, we didn't have very often. Not that time of year. And it was just all these brilliant white. I thought there were clouds. And then as I looked at it, I realized... They were angels dressed in white as far as I could see. Wow. And then there's an angel standing beside me, and he's like nine foot tall. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and looked at him, and uh, he started talking to me. I'm not going to tell you what he said, but uh, he gave me some instructions, and he brought to my remembrance another visitation I'd had. And it, it was so, I, I don't, you know, I think everybody here will understand this. We have experiences in God that we have no words for. Oh, it's unspeakable. This is true. I mean, it's almost, if I can just jump in, it's how, how, no, 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 darling, they can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. They can hear me. So <laughs> he's, he's being rebellious right now. <laughs> how can I be rebellious? <laughs> when he's the head, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, a couple of things. One, why do we find that strange when after Jesus was tempted of the enemy, fallen angel, then the angels ministered to him? Remember that? He was tempted of the enemy. You know, he, he fasted 40 days or however long it was. Days. And then he was tempted of the enemy, a fallen angel. And then afterwards, it says, it reads... Then the angels ministered unto him. Well, now uh, the Lord Jesus wow. Christ needs angels to minister unto him. Hello. <laughs> yeah, and that happened, that happened more than once when he was praying in the garden before the crucifixion. The angels came and ministered to him. And then at his resurrection, angels were there announcing his resurrection. Oh. Then when he ascended into heaven, the angels were there saying, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing into the heavens? He's coming back the same way he went up. So mm -hmm. then my point is simply this. Why do we think it's strange mm -hmm. for angels to be ministering to us when our Lord and Savior, God the Son, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son, while living here on this earth, had the ministries of the angels for him. Yeah. And he is the captain of the host. And it says in Hebrews that the ministering spirits, the angels are ministering spirits. They're supposed to minister unto us. Yes. Right. So, I mean. They are the ministers to the heirs of salvation. Well, I'm kind of re -pre preaching my message. So I'm, I want to 
You keep preaching. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, I want to say something here, no, though. No, 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 no. Praise the Lord. I tell you. <laughs> We're ready for round two. Come in. <laughs> Can I get a witness? <laughs> Where's my hanky? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, because you know, and we just have to know. That God, this, ooh, I, right now, this is the Holy Spirit. We have to understand that God has done everything possible to cause us to be winners. Yeah. He sent his son. Mm -hmm. He's given us the comforter. And he's given us an army, an army that has never been defeated. The most Formidable army ever to go against God was Satan and those that followed him, and they were defeated. There's never been an army. You can name anything in human history, but there's never been an army like the one that went against God, the pastor preached about. And yet the armies of God, the Lord of hosts. Woo! Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to drink my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amen. You know, my All right. Was curse they gave. I know God is ministering to those people. You know, it's just the anointing, honey. You were just real wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we're having church. Amen. We're having church at our house. There you go. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you no, know, I've I've always heard that angels don't have wills, but they most they must have some kind of a will if one third of them rebelled, right? Yeah, you know, I've heard that too. And the way I see it is that the ones that did not rebel are willing to be willing. Hmm. They're willing to obey. They've made up their minds. So uh, I don't think there's any chance of another rebellion like that ever taking place. You know, the angels obey. This is along of what you said that they uh, there was a time when the angels were self-willed, but that's come to an end. Um, angels will follow out their instructions, even if it means um, destroying people. We don't understand; they're not human. They don't have human emotions. They don't have right. the same rationale and you know, transactional analysis and ethical problems that we have. When David was, was doing a census of Israel, an angel stood over Jerusalem with a sword drawn, ready to destroy Jerusalem, the holy city. But David repented. Now, wait a second. Here are angels that without batting an eye are getting ready to wipe out Everyone who lives in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, mm. because God, that was in, they were waiting for their instructions that if that's what God said, that's what they would do. And here's this angel standing above the city, big angel, huh? Mm. With a sword drawn, ready to kill God's people. Now that's Old Testament, I agree. But the point I'm trying to make is, there's no limit to how far they will go to obey God. Wow. Nobody else have a thought along that line or disagreement, maybe? No. Right? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the battles that were won by Israel were actually won by angel angelic intervention. <laughs> Angels killed people. Right. And they don't they don't lose any sleep over it. I don't know if they do sleep. <laughs> Maybe they they don't. But um, it doesn't. There's no pause there. Yeah. They just obey. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be on their bad side. That's for sure. Yeah, I see don't. in the in the chat. Nolan put, uh, "We will judge angels." We will <laughs> judge angels. Yeah. Um, see, they're not above us. We're above them. They're our servants. They're at our beck and call. And we will judge angels. You know, it's uh, what Amen. we've been called to is amazing. 
a lot of times our focus is just on, you know, what we do every day, making a living, family, friends, distractions, diversions, fun. But we have really been called to something exalted, something very important. Yes. And judging angels is part of it. Wow. Anyone else? <laughs> well, I know for myself personally, I've had at least four occasions with open visions of angels. Now, they were always in a desperate situation where I needed divine protection, and God gave it, and he allowed me to see it. So I knew nothing's going to happen. You're good. <laughs> but you know, lately, it's been like, well, God, I haven't seen angels in years. It's like, well, you haven't needed to see any angels. <laughs> but um, this morning in prayer, he was just showing me um, two angels walking beside me. And I said, oh, that's just because I have heard Pastor Larry saying that he has two big angels walk beside him. And I remember my pastor in the past, Pastor Carl, said he always had two angels next to him, Bubba and Louie. And he joke about them all the time. And it's like, no, these are yours. They walk beside you all the time. And he said, and now I'm putting one in front of you to go forward towards your future and one behind you to shut off and cut off the evil of your past. And I said, woo, I like that one. Okay, good. But yeah, so God will show you things and reveal things to you in prayer when you're pressing in. And hey, yes, we've got them everywhere, but it's nice to see them. Listen, um, Pastor Lord and I are going to go eat. It's uh, late here. We love you. Keep the party going. Uh, we will see our Z team on Monday. Yeah, and I appreciate yes. what uh, Christine. <laughs> I have to, I have, no, I know a name, but because my BBF, her daughter's name is Christina, I had to separate them because my BBF, she I absolutely do not say Christine. And right. Christine is absolutely not say Christine. So for a moment there, I was like, me. <laughs> I, listen, I don't mind what you call me, but do not call me late for dinner. <laughs> but I want to say thank you We love you all. Enjoy. Buen provecho. Gracias, mi hermano. All right. So, Hoy un restaurante de chino para comer. Palmientos chino. Uh, Ana, Ana Maria, ¿cuándo tú llegas a Barcelona? ¿Cuándo llegas a Barcelona? It depends uh, from many. No, no es inglés, lo siento. <laughs> Depende de media. Depende de media. Approximately April, I think. Tal vez en abril o marzo, porque... Okay. Para comprar el vestido prefiero de marzo, prefiero marzo. Perfecto. Mi casa es tu casa. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, Maria is going, oh my God, they are just destroying the Spanish language. <laughs> no, I'm actually impressed that you're speaking that well. They let, us, they let yeah. us make mistakes. They never correct us. Burrito. I can yeah, say that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Taco. Javier <laughs> and Anna, your hand is up. Do you mean that to be up? Ah, yes, yes. Uh, Anna Maria told me some time ago, it was a pretty good time ago, but when there was this war, the six day war uh, of Israel against all the countries that surrounded it, they were mm -hmm. heavily outnumbered that when they uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, jet fighters were flying. The Arabs saw that there were like two shiny beings besides each airplane, and they they simply <laughs> couldn't fight against them. They they had a very bad, uh, heavy beating, <laughs> and they, uh, those were angels that were on the war protecting uh, God's people, the uh, Jewish people. That's it. Amazing. Amen. All righty. Well, nobody's going to talk up. We can let you go outside and play in the playground today. 
<laughs> I, did, I just wanted to make this one comment. Um, I appreciate Brother Huggins speaking about how that we shouldn't worship angels. Right. Um, yeah. A lot of people do. Yes. I used to sell Avon. And they always had little angels, you know, pins or, you know, ornaments or all kinds of things. And this one woman, she would always come to me and she'd go, oh, do they have something new this week? You know, in the book, angels, yeah, I mean, new angels. And I, I said to her one time, you know, we're not supposed to worship angels. Oh, but I love angels, you know. And I said, but you don't worship them. You know, they're not yeah. there to worship. They're there to be, you know, like a guardian. And, you know, but some people do, you know, they they really put that out as far as worshiping an angel, you know, but they're not. They're. And there is even a scripture in the Bible that warns against not listening to people who would tell you to worship angels or some other supposed vision they've had that's not backed up by the word. I can't remember at the moment where it is, but I read it last week. So, um, but yes, it's really important that we understand that that is a no, no. So, amen, amen. Right. Okay. Well, oh, your hand's up again, Aviar. Did you want to talk? Or... Yes, uh, it remembers me uh, when I was a little guy. And I think many of you had that teaching when you were very, very little. There was this prayer of your guardian angel before you went to sleep. That was all wrong. <laughs> I remember it in Spanish. Angel de la guardia, dulce compañía, no me desampare ni no chinilla, something like that. It was so, so out of place. I remember it. Yeah. I never heard that one, but yes, <laughs> it's not a place. And we do teach our children a lot of wrong stuff in the body of Christ. It's no. unfortunate, but it does happen. That's why we got to stay at it. Keep going, keep learning, keep maturing, keep growing. All right. Well, it looks like we are going to wrap it up and go out and play outside. Now, when I say you're going out to play in the playground, I'm talking about getting out there and talking to other people. Open your yap and share the word with somebody that's out in the playground. That's our responsibility. So, okay, let's see. Pastor Sharon, would you pray us out of here? I sure will. Uh, thank you for this time, Lord. What a precious time it was to hear your word, to, to, to experience the anointing of God and to have uh, fellowship one with another. We are grateful, Lord. We're grateful for everything you've given us, for all that you've done for us, and for the angels of God that you've given to us to minister unto us. And we just thank you, Lord, for showing us ways to yield ourselves to you and your ways, and for the blessings to flow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.